Okay, for the first video on this channel, uh, first video ever, um, what we're going to attempt to do here is um, upgrade the hard drive in my Verus Pro um, from the standard flavour uh, that it comes with, uh, just a normal mechanical uh, SATA disc, to um, an SSD. Uh, this is the SSD that I went with, 250 gig, same size as what's already in the machine. Um, but before we start anything, um, I'm going to clone the drive that's already in there, uh, just in case we run into any issues, then I can recover it, um, and it's not going to be a huge issue. And it also means that all of the software that's currently on here um, transfers onto uh, the SSD. Um, but before we do that, we're going to power it up, um, and I'm going to time how long it takes. Um, there we go and see what gains we get by timing it again after we fit up the SSD. So it is running Windows XP. Um, they are quite an old machine now. If the upgrade to SSD goes well, I will consider doing another video, maybe upgrading to Windows 7 or preferably Windows 10, uh, but that's for another video, like I said. So we just passed the 30 seconds mark and we're at the desktop. And then the Snap-on diagnostic software should start automatically. There we go. And I'll just get ready to stop this. One and a half minutes, just gone. And there we are, at the start screen. One minute 45. Not a bad time, not a long time to wait, um, but hopefully we'll, we can get some, um, some better g speeds from the SSD. Now, the next step is for me to install the software that I'm going to use to clone uh, the drive. Um, to do that I've got it on a memory key and I'm going to stick it into this little dongle here that I had to make. Um, when I purchased the machine, it was second hand, um, my USB port was damaged so I ordered a new USB port however when it came the orientation of the USB port was the wrong way around so instead of plugging it in that way it had to be plugged in or the socket was, was that way um, now some might think that that's not a problem, however, what that also means is that the power and the data um, connections, because there's two power, two data, um, are flipped. So what I had to do was take this small extension, I just cut it here, and I switched the data uh, lines, and I switched the positive lines, so this is like a crossover cable. Um, because if I was to plug straight into here with the USB key, I would, I would obviously fry the USB key. Um, I learned that the hard way. Um, so I made this little cable. Um, I have tried to find the, the correct port to replace it, but um, yeah, well, um, they don't exist apparently. Um, yeah, that's another story. Um, so I will install the software uh, and I'll be back in a little while. Okay, I wasn't going to record this, but I thought, why not, I'm going to just speed it up. Uh, so that's the uh, SSD plugged in uh, to the USB, and now I'm just going to use uh, the Acronis True Image software. So 
but I'm just going to ch change that to manual because I like to see exactly what's uh, going to be done and if I can change anything to make it a little bit better. Uh, that's the source drive, 232.9 uh, gigabytes. That's the primary master. Click next. And in a second, it should ask me for the destination drive, which is the only one that I can select because the other one's greyed out. Click next. That's just telling me that there's some partitions already on there. That's because I had to create a primary partition for Windows to to see the disk. Um, so yep, yeah, I'm fine for those to be uh, deleted. Okay, now this is choosing the, the data moving method, um, old drive to new drive. Uh, at the moment it, it's selected proportional, which means if you put a bigger drive in, it will um, automatically resize the partition so that it fits the full drive. If it's a smaller drive, uh, the partitions will be shrunk accordingly. Um, I just want this to be an exact clone, so I'm going to change that to as is. Okay, so exactly the way it is now will be exactly uh, the same on the new disk. Click next. So that's just giving me a breakdown of the what it's going to look like before and what it's going to look like after. Okay. I'm happy with that to proceed. progress bar up here. And that is preparing the disc. It's not focusing very well. Okay, we'll just leave that running. I'll probably speed this little part up um, and I'll be back as soon as the clone is finished. Okay, so here we are back. Um, I must apologise. Um, I turned the camera off during the clone process. I didn't want to leave it for uh, over an hour. Um, and I forgot to start the camera again. Um, yeah, sorry. But I am new to this, so I hope I'll not forget again in the future. Um, so the, the clone process completed. It did complete with errors, um, saying that it couldn't find particular files. Um, I think it was related to the ACH. I can't remember, I did take some pictures, let me have a look, see if I can quickly get them. Um, uh, ACPI, I don't know whether you'll be able to see that. Word focus, no. But there was two or three of those errors, and um, there was an option to ignore, and um, so I just ignored the errors, um, in the hope that it would still work. Um, I also went ahead and swapped the hard drive. So I now have the uh, original 40 gig hard drive, which I've labelled up, so I know I'm going to put that somewhere safe, and I've got that if ever this SSD fails, or I need to re-image or start from scratch again, or, or whatever, because I'm going to have a play about and add some extra software um, to, to this unit, so I don't have to carry my laptop and this unit. Um, but uh, swapping the hard drive was, was fairly simple, if I just lie this down, the, uh, the stand just comes off, you just push that together. Um, you've got two screws. I don't know whether you can see that very well. Let me have a look. You've got uh, two screws 
uh, here, there, there and there. Um, you've got three down this side, one, two, three. You've got three down this side, and if you remove the battery, you've got two. You've got two underneath the battery as well. And once all of those screws are out, uh, the two halves just separate, uh, just where the colour changes. Um, be careful when you lift this up if you're going to try it yourself. There is um, a, a multi plug on the circuit board around about here, that's for the camera, that just pulls straight out. And there's another one down here, um, which is for the connector for the scope on the back of the unit. Um, that again, that just literally just pulls straight out. Um, but don't just lift it straight off if you're going to give this a try. Um, once you've done that, over in which corner is it? I can't remember now. Which way around did I have it? Might have been that way around. Yeah. One of these corners, there's four screws, which are a plastic cover that's over the hard drive. So the hard drive will be in kind of like that. Um, this is a plastic cover with four screws. Once you lift, take that off, lift the plastic cover off. You can lift the hard drive up, turn it over, and there's just a ribbon cable. Um, that's, I wouldn't say very fragile, but they are um, known to crack, or if you, if you crease them too much, they will break the, um, break the uh, tracks. Um, this connector has a little bit of tape on it. You just pull the tape off, um, pull the connector out, and it's the exact opposite to install the SSD. So let me just my camera back down so I can put that stand back in. So like I said putting it back together is just the reverse of taking it apart. It, it's, it's simple. Nothing complicated, no funny catches or latches. Or um, You'd have to be heavy handed um, if you were to break anything because there's just nothing there to break. Um, it all just comes apart fairly easily. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've already uh, rebooted this. Um, one thing I would say that if you were trying this, once you reboot it, the, the cloning software that I use, um, Acronis, as it's called, Acronis True Image, that would appear to uninstall the driver for all of the devices on the unit, such as the audio and the USB and the video card. Um, so when you reboot the machine, don't instantly like reboot it again or, or stop playing around with it just let it sit for 10-15 minutes while all the drivers all the hardware is detected and the drivers are reinstalled um, I was a little bit um, impulsive and I can't remember why but I thought mm, I'd best reboot it again and I rebooted it and the next time uh, it powered on uh, it was giving me an, init an initialization error when I start when the snap on software started um, Looking at Device Manager, the uh, high definition audio uh, driver had been disabled by Windows for whatever reason. Um, I actually uninstalled that device um, and then rebooted the system, left it sit for five minutes, it picked up the high definition audio hardware, um, reinstalled the driver, boom, working great, reinstalled it, the Snap on software started fine straight away. Uh, so there's no issues, it's running exactly like it was. Um, and I know the result, but you don't for the boot time. Um, so this is hopefully what you've all been waiting for. So if I go into, uh, let's just put that down there. I'm going to try and uh, you can see. I don't know how that light's reflecting on there. Um, don't know how well you're going to be able to see at what stage of this is at. But we will start it up. Now, if I remember rightly, about 30 seconds. On the original disc and um, we have the desktop displayed um, and within 1 minute 45 um, the actual software the snap on software will drop and ready to use so let's see if we are any quicker here with the SSD so we were, uh, 28 seconds so that's two seconds quicker for the desktop I think the splash screen, this splash screen here, displayed on the original disc after 48 seconds, uh, whereas on this time it was around about 35. So that's considerably quicker, it's about 12, 12 seconds quicker. Let me get ready to stop this.
there we go less than a minute and last time it was 1 minute 45 so I've pretty much half the time um, not quite but I've knocked a good 45 seconds off there 45 46 seconds um, so I think that is a, a nice gain time wise I'm sure once I put um, a, a little bit more software on here because this is just a bare bone system with the minimum it needs to run um, and the snap on software once I put a little bit of more software on um, I've got some other uh, interfaces uh, to, for diagnostics for, for different vehicles um, that I like to use. I've got um, uh, some Peugeot, some Renault ones. Um, so rather than take my laptop around, I'm going to try and install the software on here and, and use it, that I can take this and use it from there. Um, I'm sure that it'll probably slow down a little bit. Um, but 45 seconds to be ready to, to knock that kind of time off, um, even if it goes back to that time, I'm going to be over the moon with that. I'll be really happy. Once again, I'm sorry for not videoing the um, actual swapping of the hard drive. If I ever need to take this apart again, I will um, video it and add it to a link to, to this video. Um, but yeah, that's it. All working. One other thing before um, before I sign off. Um, I'm, I want to upgrade the, the OS on this. Um, XP is too old. It's, um, it's unsupported. Do I go Windows 7 or do I go Windows 10? Windows 7 will be going end of life at the end of this year, I believe, or very early next year. Um, so therefore, security updates won't be released anymore for that. Um, so I'm, I'm pushing towards Windows 10, but I'm thinking the hardware may not be compatible. It's got one gig of memory and the absolute minimum um, for Windows 10 is one gig of memory. But I think that's going to put it on its limit. It might slow it down. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Windows 7, Windows 10? Comment below. And I'm sure you'll agree that that, my friend, is a positive fix.